G'day folks, Cam from Wild Touring. I've come out forward driving today and I'm going to put together a short video to run you through my latest electrical upgrades and try explain why I've taken this direction. Those of you that are following me on Facebook probably already know I've been busy fitting out my father-in-law's caravan and the canopy of my D-Max with a lithium battery setup. Both the caravan and the canopy now have essentially the same system. Now is probably a good time to mention that I'm not an auto sparky, I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm not a tradesman of any sort, I'm just a bloke that scraped together just enough knowledge along the way to have a red hot crack at most things. So with that said, I'll start with what I've done to the canopy. Uh, previously I had two 120 amp hour AGM deep cycle batteries down here. These were run in parallel which gave me a total battery bank of 240 amp hours. These were charged with a projector IDC 25 DC DC charger, it's a 25 amp charger. Uh, it was taking uh, power from my cranking battery while I'm driving, uh, so the alternator, uh, and from 300 watts of solar on the roof, which was the maximum amount of solar that I could run through that charger. Now that solar is just cheap eBay stuff. Uh, it probably isn't actually 300 watt. Uh, a lot of these listings you see are overstated, but I've never actually taken the measurements to find out. So it's generally accepted that deep cycle AGM batteries, despite their name deep cycle, don't actually last particularly long if you're regularly discharging them beyond 50%. So that means that my 240 amp hour battery bank had a usable 120 amp hours. The other thing about AGMs is they don't like to be charged or discharged by more than 25 to 30% of their capacity. This means that real power hungry items like air compressors or inverters uh, can shorten the lifespan of the batteries. The charge algorithms for AGM batteries also mean that they'll reach about 80% capacity at a bulk charge, which happens fairly quickly, uh, but they take quite some time to charge that last 20%, which is known as the absorption state of charging. And then finally, another major consideration of AGM is the fact that they're quite heavy. My 240 amp hour battery bank weighed a staggering 66 kilos. This is a touring rig, it's already heavy. I've got to be really conscious of my payload. Um, I have fitted a GVM upgrade, uh, but that doesn't mean I've, I, I, I can be throwing weight in left, right and center. Uh, I've still got to be conscious of what I'm carrying. So that setup was seriously struggling, mostly due to my own mistakes. The load from my 2000 watt inverter and from my air compressor that were both hooked up to the batteries was just too big for the batteries to cope. Uh, but regardless of that, I still just didn't have the capacity to run everything I wanted to. I found myself constantly monitoring the voltage gauge to conserve energy. So I was starting to hear more and more about lithium batteries. Um, so I started doing my own research. A lot of what I was hearing was it's great, but it's overpriced, it's not cost effective. Uh, or people saying that it was incredibly dangerous and I was going to burn my car or my caravan down to the ground if I was to use it. Um, in terms of being cost effective, that's relative to your own personal needs. Not everyone's going to need to ditch their lead acid batteries for lithium, but I'll try to explain to you why I think it was cost effective for me uh, with my circumstances. And as far as the safety of lithium goes, there's a bit of confusion out there. All you really need to know is that there's a couple of different types of lithium batteries. Uh, the most common are lithium ion phosphate, which is LifePo4, and then you've got lithium ion and lithium polymer. Lithium ion and lithium polymer are the most energy dense, but they're not very stable. Uh, these are the batteries you've probably heard stories about catching fire and exploding. LifePo4 are the safest of the lithium batteries. They don't overheat, they won't catch fire or explode, even if they're punctured, and nothing inside of them actually poses any health risk or environmental hazard. The chemistry inside them is so stable that you can actually charge them with your standard less added uh, lead acid battery chargers. So I could have actually charged them with that projector charger I had. Um, which is why a lot of uh, manufacturers are advertising them as a drop-in replacement for your lead acid batteries. But look, I'd spent a small fortune on, on my lithium batteries, so I just coughed up a few more clams to buy a charger with a lithium algorithm just to protect them. I don't know if that's 100% necessary, um, but uh, I thought it was worth doing. And some uh, lithium battery manufacturers will tell you that you do need to be using uh, lithium chargers. So. So when I decided that I wanted a couple of LifePo batteries, I sent emails out to every supplier, wholesaler, importer that I could find in WA, chasing some information, some specs, and some and a, uh, and a quote. The only mob that were really any help were off-road living, uh, which is good because Jason and Kathleen, the owners, were already recommended to me by a few mates running their gear uh, and other blokes in the industry I'd spoken to. So I got chatting to them, they were really helpful, and I bought a heap of gear from them. Uh, it's a good time to mention I'm, I'm, I did pay for all my gear, 
um, and I'm not paid to, to do a review on it or anything like that. Uh, I'm just generally really impressed with the good service, so um, I'm quite happy to, uh, to plug them. So in the canopy, I've installed an Enerdrive 40 amp DC-DC charger, uh, which is uh, also regulating my 300 watts of solar on the roof. It's a 40 amp charger, so I could even stick another 200 watts or more up there if I wanted to. Um, and then I've got two uh, 100 uh, amp hour LifePo4 batteries in parallel, which gives me a 200 amp, batter a 200 amp hour battery bank. Uh, these batteries can be discharged down 100%, but it's generally ex uh, accepted that 80% depth of discharge is better for longevity. So my 200 amp hour LifePo4 battery bank has 160 amp hours of usable capacity. They've also got a max discharge of 100 amp continuous and 200 amp in burst each. So in parallel, I've got a max continuous discharge current of 200 amps, which is huge. Uh, I can now safely run that inverter fully loaded up. Uh, I could run uh, hair, hair straighteners, sandwich presses, coffee machines, milk frothers, microwaves, uh, grinders, air compressor, whatever I'd like pretty much as long as it's under the two kilowatt. These batteries will also charge incredibly quickly. Um, you can actually charge them at 100% of their capacity, so I could charge these at 100 amps. Uh, my 40 amp charger, I'll basically get 40 amps off idle, um, and that'll charge basically at a bulk the entire time. So I'll get 40 amps right up to 99% capacity, and then that last 1%, uh, it sort of slowly winds down over a couple of minutes to um, top up to 100%, but it's incredibly quick, a hell of a lot quicker than the AGMs were. That last 20% of the AGMs, uh, when it was in the absorption stage, used to take ages. So despite being physically the same size as the previous batteries, but having more usable capacity, they're actually a hell of a lot lighter too. Each one of these lithium batteries weighed in at 11 kilos each. My previous AGMs were 33 kilos each. So they're only one third of the weight and that saved me 44 kilos from my payload. Other than uh, running the new charger with the lithium algorithm, there were two other things I had to do for my setup specifically to run lithium. Uh, one of them was I had to upgrade the wiring that went from the DC-DC charger to the cranking battery. Previously I had six mil twin core because I only had the small 25 amp charger. To run, to get the full 40 amp uh, from the cranking battery to this charger, I ran dual core six gauge everything fused in line with MIDI fuses. The other thing is, uh, previously, when I was running the AGM, you were able to get an idea of what capacity was left in your batteries by looking at the voltage gauge. You knew that your resting voltage at around 13 volts was pretty much 100% full, and if your resting voltage was around 12 volts, then you're around about 50% capacity and your batteries needed charging. Lithium's different, you cannot rely on looking at the voltage gauge to determine what capacity you have left. It pretty much keeps a consistent 13 to 13.5 volts the entire time, and just as it starts to get flat, it drops off suddenly. So it's not a clear indication. So what I did was I fit a, um, a, a Victron Smart battery monitor. That's got a Bluetooth app that connects my phone. Um, everything that's running off these batteries runs through this uh, shunt. which is on the negative terminal of the battery. The shunt connects to the battery monitor and it basically monitors all the amps coming in from charging and all the amps coming out from discharging. And it works out how much battery capacity I've got left uh, and how long I've got left at that load. So it'll, it'll break it down to days, hours, minutes and tell me what I've got left. Uh, I'll show you what that app looks like. So I can see here, it's telling me my batteries are at 100% capacity. I've got nothing drawing off them and nothing going into them. It can't charge because obviously it's 100% full. And then it breaks that uh, into uh, how many watts, consumed amp hours, and time remaining. If I look at my history, you can see here when I was doing some testing, I left the oven on for a couple of days. Um, and I, I managed to discharge the batteries down uh, 87 amp hours. Uh, it'll tell you how many times it's reached, how many times it's uh, done a total charge to reach 100% capacity after a discharge, and and how many times it's synced the uh, the battery monitor with the batteries. So that was that's the canopy sorted. Uh, my father-in-law Brian has a Jayco Silverline 25 foot. Uh, it got the same treatment. It got two new 100 amp hour LiPo4 batteries to replace his 100 amp hour AGMs. Uh, I 
pulled out the standard uh, crappy 15 amp charger that was in there and replaced it with the same 40 amp DC DC charger, the Enerdrive module that I'm running. Um, and I also put a 60 amp Victron uh, lithium AC charger in there for him so that when he's got 240 volt power available, um, should it be a generator or a caravan site, whatever, he can plug in and, and charge those batteries from flat to full in like two hours. Um, I also had to fit a new fuse box for everything to run off in there because um, previously everything was fused through that uh, charger that used to be in there. That was like an all-in-one job. It was an AC charger, DC charger and also a fuse block that everything was wired up to. Um, so yeah, new fuse box there. Uh, and I've also uh, wired in an isolator so that when he gets home and he's parked the caravan up in the shed and it's sitting on a float charge, he can switch everything off so there's nothing uh, running off those batteries. Uh, also, he was previously running 120 watts of solar on his roof. He's now running 540 watts. Um, and beforehand, he didn't have the capacity to get through sort of one night without discharging his batteries too low and, and risking damaging them. And we reckon now he's never gonna have to use that generator of his. He should be getting a few days easy. Brian drives a Dodge Ram uh, 2500, which is already a bloody long vehicle. Uh, but because the auxiliary batteries were towards the back of the caravan, that meant it was a massive span of cable needed to run from the Ram's cranking battery to the auxiliary batteries in the van. So to tackle the issue of voltage drop, over that kind of span, I got advice from Jason Off-Road Living. Uh, he hooked us up with some uh, heavy two gauge cable, which was fused in line with MIDI fuses at both ends. Uh, I also had to get a couple of 175 amp hour big Anderson plugs off him, because uh, I couldn't physically fit that uh, uh, two gauge cable into a 50 amp plug anymore. Um, so Jason hooked us up with some of them as well. Uh, Brian still needs to make a bracket for, for uh, this one here. Because two gauge cables are so expensive, I just went single core rather than dual core like I'd run. Um, and I'm just earthing through the chassis of the car and through the chassis of the caravan uh, as, your, as your negative uh, cable if you like. All right, let's talk money. In terms of being cost effective, there's no doubt that the initial cost is gonna hurt. But this is the way that I see it. A 100 amp hour off-road living life pro 4 battery like I'm running has a usable uh, 80 amp hours and it's currently uh, on their website $1,050. A comparatively sized 160 amp hour AGM battery with a usable 80 amp hours is $300 to $400. Um, so let's say the lithium is three to four times the price. The LifePo 4 at 80% depth of discharge will cycle 2,000 to 4,000 times, whereas that AGM at a 50% depth of discharge will only cycle 500 to 1,000 times. So basically the lithium battery is four times the price, but it will last four times as long, which means that the replacement cost is comparative um, over a span of time. But you're getting all the benefits of charging faster, uh, more efficiently, a higher maximum continuous discharge current, which means you can run inverters, air compressors, etc., and they're lighter and they'll discharge deeper. And you don't have to worry about replacing them for, depending on how often you're using them, how deep you're discharging them, anywhere from seven to 20 years. Uh, anyway, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, from a personal perspective, I'm stoked with the system. It's seriously surpassed my expectations. I'm getting 40 amp charge off idle, which is mental. Previously, uh, when I'd go away camping with the old setup, I'm running lights everywhere, a fridge, a freezer, water pump. I'm charging drone batteries, camera batteries, um, charging uh, my Ryobi One Plus batteries, which I'm using for drills and fans and other stuff. I wasn't able to run that travel buddy for more than a few hours when I was parked up without starting to have to really watch watch the voltage and stressing about running out of power. So massive difference. And thank you guys for watching. Um, thanks for all the new subscribers. We cracked 1,000 sometime around Christmas, so that's wicked. Uh, 2019 is gonna be a pretty big year for us. We've got heaps of cool stuff coming up. I'm gonna do some collaboration work with some other YouTube channels. Uh, there's gonna be more trip videos, There'll be rig reviews and a walk around of this car and canopy, which I've kept putting it off. I'm sorry. I promise that's going to be the next video coming out. Um, and I might do, might do some more product reviews if I get a hold of anything that's pretty cool I want to talk about. Um, and then next year is the big one. Next year we're off towing a camper trailer the whole way around Australia with the toddler. Six months plus we're going to be on the road. I don't quite know what I'm going to do with videos, whether I'm going to be putting them up as we go 
or um, whether I'll come back and, and spend six months editing them and, and releasing them as I finish. I'm not too sure yet, but there is gonna be heaps of content um, on my YouTube channel and there's gonna be heaps of content on the Facebook page. So if you're interested in that, um, full driving, free camping all over the country, uh, check that out, have a look, follow me on uh, Facebook, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, if you've got any questions or feedback, please leave a comment and like the video. Thanks guys, cheers.